Welcome! In this video, I'll show you how to solve problem 2.34 as it appears in the third edition of Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics. Now, this problem states the following. It says, construct the S matrix for scattering from a delta function well um, and use it to obtain the bound state energy and check your answer against what we had found before. Now, in this case, of course, we have um, what we have seen in the past. So basically, we have some delta function. Um, let's say it's centered at zero. So at x equals zero. So this is our potential. And we want to find the bound states. Um, and we have done this before, of course, right? we know that in region one, so if this is region one, and this is region two, uh, we know that the wave functions are going to be of the form a e i k x plus b e to the minus i k x. And we also have, um, let's name them f just for consistency, um, f e i k x, you could of course just call them um, c and d if you want, g e to the minus i k x. Now normally we take g to be zero. Um, but just to do this in like a very general case, um, let's say that it's not zero, right, it could be something else. So applying border conditions, um, we get, right, a continuity at x equals zero. So continuity at x equals zero gives us that a plus b has to be f plus g. And then the discontinuity, I'm going to go quickly over this, because we have done this before, if you need more detail, um, then go back uh, through my playlist and uh, check a, take a look at the videos where we discuss the delta potential. So the discontinuity of the derivative um, at x equals zero. So this we have already done. So I will go a little bit faster. So we need to take the derivative of this part. So we get i k times f evaluating at zero. Of course, the exponentials uh, go to one. So f um, minus g, and then we get minus this derivative. So we get a plus b, and this is equal to minus, this is 2m alpha divided by h bar squared times our wave function evaluated at zero. We can take any of the two forms. I will take a plus b because it's more convenient, um, but it doesn't really matter. You will get to the same result anyways. So this is equation two. We can, of course, simplify it further. So first of all, divide by i k. So we get i k here, and then multiply and divide by i so that we get it to the numerator, where we get minus i, so simply i, since the mi minuses cancel out. Then we can define a variable, just as we did before, beta, that is going to be m alpha k h bar squared. This is not necessary, but it makes notation cleaner, so I do recommend it. Now, why not include the two? That is simply hindsight, because we know that there are going to be a lot of twos going around, so they cancel out later. But if you don't know that, you can perfectly well just define this as two uh, with a two inside and eventually you will notice that there's a lot of twos everywhere and you can redefine your beta accordingly later. It doesn't matter, right? We can do it a bit better now with the hindsight that you know I've already done this, um, but it doesn't matter if you don't know that. Okay, and this however is not all that clean. Let's put all b's and a's together. So we get f minus g, this is equal to a factor of one plus two i beta, and then we get plus or actually minus b times, and then we get one minus two i beta. So this is equation two. So our goal is to find the S matrix so that we can use it to determine the bound states. And the S matrix, as you might recall, gives us the outgoing magnitudes, right, of b and f, in terms of the ingoing magnitudes of a and g. And here we get the S matrix. So writing this in matrix form, as we saw in the previous video, we know that b is S11a plus S12g, and f is S21a plus S22g, right? This is what you must know. So we want to get um, to something like this, right, to turn these two equations, one and two, I'm going to get rid of this, so you don't get confused. Uh, these two equations, we must somehow transform 
um, so that we can get b is equal to something that only has a and g and f is equal to something that only has a and g. But we still have um, mixed terms. So basically we want to now get rid of b and then get rid of f. So how do we get rid of f? Getting rid of f is quite simple because we have f here and f here. So if we take equation 1 minus equation 2, then we immediately um, get the following. So we subtract them. The left hand side we get minus, uh, actually no, plus 2g. And the right hand side becomes, um, let's see, if we do this minus this, we get negative a2i beta. And then we get plus b2 minus 2i beta. And here notice that we have a lot of 2s, so we can simplify them, divide by 2. Right? That's why we left the 2 outside. And here we can now find an expression for b. So from here, b is equal to, let's see, we, we add a, so we get ai beta and then plus g, and all of this divided by 1 minus i beta. And this, of course, uh, leads us to 1 over 1 minus i beta. I'm just, you know, making it a bit neater. i b a plus g. So from here, we can already see that S11 is i b divided by 1 minus i beta, and S12 is 1 divided by 1 minus i beta. So there we go. Now we want to do something similar for f. But for that, we need to get rid of b, and that is not that simple. I mean, it is not the worst in the world, but notice that b here is alone, but here it isn't. So in order to get rid of it, um, we are going to have to multiply equation 1 by 1 minus 2i beta, so that we can then add them. So let's add them together, right, immediately. So we multiply and we add them together. So we get a 1 minus 2i beta plus a 1 plus 2i beta, and then we have the b's, which cancel out. And then we have f 1 minus 2i beta plus f. And then we have plus g 1 minus 2i beta minus g. So there we are. Um, so we can now simplify this a little bit. So um, this and this cancel out. So we get 2a is equal to f. 2 minus 2i beta, and then the G, that part of g cancels out, so we get minus 2i beta g. So once again, we can divide by 2. And now we can isolate f. So we get f is a plus i beta g divided by 1 minus i beta. Or just to make this even more clear, um, I'm going to do it like, like this, actually, f is 1 over minus i beta, 1 minus i beta, uh, times a plus i beta g. So here we have s12, uh, sorry, s21, which is um, 1 minus i beta, and s22 is i beta over 1 minus i beta. So thus, we can now form our s matrix using these two results. And I'm just going to put them side by side so that this is very clear. This and this. Oh, well, okay, I need to um, add a few things. So this is B is equal to minus, uh, uh, was that the A? Yeah, that, that was the A. So this is I beta A plus G. Okay, so from here, the S matrix is 1 over 1 minus I beta factor of and then we have i beta 1 1 i beta and now how do we find the bound states knowing the s matrix right because in principle this also gives us by the way we got the transmission coefficient um i mean the reflection and transmission coefficients um here right these coefficients gives us uh, give us every single um, coefficient that we need but how do we find the bound states so the bound states are the ones that happen when this blows up, right? That's what we found previously. Um, the bound states are when this matrix blows up. And in the case where k now goes to ik, right? Because our energies are now less than zero. 
So that, uh, that changes when solving the Schrodinger equation. Um, so how do we see, make this blow up? Well, the S matrix blows up when one minus I beta is equal to zero. So when I, one minus I beta is equal to zero, which means I beta has to be equal to one, uh, sorry, to one, yeah. But what is I beta? So I, well, I is I, beta we defined as m alpha divided by k h bar squared. So m alpha divided by k h bar squared. But k is now i k. So the i's cancel out. And this has to be equal to 1. So this means that m alpha divided by h bar squared is equal to k. But let's recall what um, k is. k is minus 2me divided by h bar, right? Because we are in the bound state, so it has to be negative here. So we can now square this and put these two things to be equal. So we get m squared alpha squared h bar to the fourth power. This is minus 2me divided by h bar squared. And from here, we can find the energy, um, which is going to be minus, let's see, m alpha squared divided by 2 h bar squared, which is, which is exactly what we had found before, um, except we didn't really have to go to that much trouble. So knowing this scattering matrix is very, very useful because it can, as we have seen, tell us a lot about the bound states and it can tell us a lot about, you know, the reflection transmission coefficients um, in a very, very simple manner. So there we go. That is the solution to problem 2.34. I hope this was useful to you. Um, if it was, please, you know, just make sure to leave a comment, like the video and subscribe, and maybe consider checking out my Patreon. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.